Hi, Alessandro, and let's break down your water animation. So uh, the overall motion and timing seem pretty good. So let's focus on the design for this one. The design and the physics. So the timing and the form seems pretty nice. Uh, the perspective reads. Uh, so if we are talking about the design aspect of it, uh, one thing that I want to discuss is the splash itself. So right now the thing with the splash is that it's basically just a rectangle. So you can see that we have this kind of form, which is essentially a rectangle and it doesn't have a lot to it. And we use it for quite a while. Then we have a few frames with more interesting form and then we transition. So it would be nice to have a bit more difference and variety in the form. So here this form looks okay. We can definitely push it more and make sure that our edges support the motion. We can go for something like this for a more realistic splash. Or we can keep this scene but straighten some of the edges. For the internal scene, uh, this works fine. One thing that it lacks is that it doesn't support the direction that well. Let's see if we can change it up a bit so that it works a bit better. And some elements to unify it a bit because otherwise it's equally broken up. So we have a lot of spikes and each spike is an individual piece. You can also notice that this stuff is on the same line, which also makes the design a bit more repetitive. Let's see, can we do something here? Let's see if we can unify it a bit. Maybe add some particles because the splash usually breaks out at the top quite fast with these kind of splashes and particles really help to sell the speed of these huge splashes. Again, let's make sure that the bottom part also has variety and that we don't make it too symmetrical. We don't make it into a symmetrical uh, cube or rectangle in this case. So let's try to break it up a bit. Maybe there are some some color here and maybe we can connect it in some places so that the bottom part doesn't seem too symmetrical either so for example something like this you can compare it and you see that it adds a lot to the design of the effect. It helps us unify it, it helps us sell the speed and the motion. And that's very important. And just adding some particles and some breakup. 
so that we have medium, big and small shapes. So for example, now we have these. This is a bit more com complex, a bit more varied. So we can do the same for other frames. So overall, I like the internal detail. Um, one thing is that again, we have uh, this kind of rectangular form. Uh, we don't have a lot of uh, volume because we don't see the other side and we don't get a lot of forms wrapping around the surface. So we have some, but not that many. And again, we have everything basically at the same level, quite symmetrically placed, breaking it up into similarly sized parts. So that's one thing that we can definitely improve. So we see we're getting this stuff and it's breaking it up into equal parts. This stuff is also quite on a similar level. So we get a very symmetrical, a very boxy design. So breaking it up would definitely help. <laughs> and if you want to show the volume, more of the volume, it would be nice to have some indication of the other side. So how how is it positioned in space? Maybe there is, for example, this part that is in front. Can you can maybe add something to indicate the bottom part and make it less magical? Maybe we can add some form to break up the bottom part. So you see, we're just adding an element and it's already helping the form, helping our cells in motion. And if we are keeping this kind of form again, we can think of a way to make sure that it doesn't become too symmetrical. So for example, this side is in front and this side is in the back. We can add some kind of elements here. And then we get a better indication of how, how it works in space. So it doesn't work as a flat plane anymore, it has some depth to it. And if we would do that in color, this would mean, for example, that add a form here. Let's, let's pick the colors. So, we have this here, fill the front side and the back side. Now what? Now let's add the foam. Introducing some parts and some particles breaking up. Of 
<laughs> not the best design that's for sure Okay, maybe something like that. Okay, getting the form and stuff at the bottom. You can notice that I curve them the way it's positioned in space, so it kind of radiates from the center. And yeah, it might be it might be worth adding just a bit more variety between these parts. Okay, let's let's take this as an example and then add in some stuff here supporting the form. Who knows the red is on the same layer? Well, whatever. So overall, the design is pretty nice. It's just about, again, making sure that we have more variety, maybe adding some depth to it, and everything will be all right. So for the later part, so for this stuff, inside you can keep that motion one thing is just to make sure that the forms inside internal shapes look interesting and support the form so they don't become too repetitive and too parallel to each other like here because everything on the same level again roughly the same lengths and stuff and if we really want to sell the volume and if you really want to sell the depths uh, it'd be nice to have a bit of variation here as well Maybe adjusting it like this, maybe coming up with something else. But the point is just 
getting a bit more variety in it and especially in the weights of these two layers so as they're indicating the essentially uh the position in space so should be we should see way more of it here than here so we can reduce the size of the foam here as we are only seeing the top part only this stretch and not the entirety of this foam So again, everything is okay, it's just about pushing it, adding variety, making sure that everything supports the motion, making sure that everything supports the design. So next, another thing that we can experiment, we can experiment on is that the entirety of the splash goes down uh, with the same timing. So it keeps being like this kind of shape and it acts like the entirety of the splash is one connected shape so the timing for everything is the same so it's nice that we have some delay here but for the other parts of the shape we don't get a delay so everything kind of acts like a line and you can notice the same thing here so at each part, the spikes appear at the same time. They go up at the same time, all of them, the center one, the side ones. Then they slow down at the same time and they go down at the same time. So that's one thing that we can definitely improve is pushing the timing so that there is difference in timing between parts. So we can delay one part of a splash and this will add a bit more variety to it. This will make the design a bit more interesting. So one side can go faster, the other side can go slower. And that makes it more believable. And the same thing here. So this stuff can definitely go down faster. But it doesn't again have to go down at the same time for all the particles. And this stuff has more momentum. So it will probably go down later so we can add a delay here and the same idea applies to the other parts so right here we create this kind of wave uh, spikes something and again they appear the spikes appear here on the same level roughly at the same time and they slow down and break into particles almost exactly at the same time. And this entire mass goes down as a whole with very little delay. So one thing that can definitely help it a bit is adding delay for the parts. So they appear sli slightly delayed, but we can definitely increase the delay between the back and the front part because right now they go down almost exactly at the same time. There is around one or two frames of delay and this is essentially doesn't mean much. Uh, the second thing is more about variety and keeping the design cohesive. So uh, I would keep it without holes for this kind of design while we're not breaking it up. So we start breaking it up around here, so the front part. So then we can introduce house. But before that, I would, uh, would be very careful with introducing house because 
the design is pretty complex as it is, and adding holes makes it even harder to plan. The second thing is uh, looking at it from a distance and trying to understand how we can connect it, because right now it's okay, but it's not very good because it's not cohesive. So everything is very broken up, we don't have a general sense of directions, everything is on the same level in terms of detail here, we have the spikes and the spikes line up at the same level, the spikes are pretty repetitive, so it would be nice to take this and push this way more in terms of readability, volume. So what can we do to make it read better? We need to define bigger areas of colors and smaller areas of colors. Right now we have a lot of medium shapes and very few smaller and bigger shapes. So as I was talking about colors and concepts and stuff, usually we have a dominant color, um, then we have a secondary color, a third color and stuff like that. And the, the primary color takes most of the picture, so it's like uh, 50s and 30s and 20. The ratio can be like this, the ratio can be a bit different, but the point is that we need the difference so that the picture looks cohesive. Right now we have around the same amount of everything and that's why it's hard to get the shapes and it's hard to understand what's happening here. So we need to define the base color. So for example, I say that blue is our base color. So let's structure our uh, frame around that idea. So blue is our dominant color. We have this spiky wave. If we want it to look more like water, it's better to slowly transition spikes to more uh, kind of either round shapes or break it up more into something like more rounded particles, uh, drops essentially. So let's unify this first. Let's remove all this stuff. We don't need it. Now again, you can notice that we have a lot of repetition at the top as well. So we have this, this, this. And the sizes of the spikes are almost exactly the same, so they don't help us sell the idea of perspective. Okay, so we have the base color. Now let's consider where we can lower the level, where we can make it higher, because we don't want everything on the same level. We want to have variety. Okay, now we have this. And let's add something to the front. I 
again leaving gaps so that it doesn't look too repetitive and maybe we can start breaking it up into particles Okay. Okay, we have this. I'll make sure that we don't have too much repetition. It would be nice to add some particles. Okay, now that we have this, Let's add secondary color. Let's add white first. So again, we don't want to overcomplicate the design. We want every color that we add to count and to help us sell the volume and the form. So for example, we want this to curve a bit to show us the top part of the water. Okay, now we need to make sure that the top part reads well here on a grand scale. So I'll add this the bump to the top part. Again, making sure that everything is not exactly on the same level. And we have some variety. Okay, let's see.
Okay, supporting the direction. Uh, now let's see what we can do here. Trying to make it more varied, not keeping it on the same level. Maybe, maybe here it's just stone. Oh, we can can erase it here so that we get a nice difference in height and stuff. Break up the edges here. Oh, God. Okay, let's erase what we don't need. Okay. So I'm trying to follow the form, support it. And I'm emphasizing essentially the edges of different parts of the splash. So the splash is not one form exactly. It has some elements to it. I'm essentially emphasizing these elements. Again, trying to keep it interesting, trying to add variety. Okay, this does seem more like water. Okay. Mm. Okay, these are quite similar on the uh, in terms of levels. So I push one part down. Maybe some highlights. Okay, and now the third color, which will act as something that just helps the cells volume while only being used very sparsely in an areas where we need it. So add some particles here and there, breaking up. Okay. Now add in the third color. The third color is some what the hell happens? The third color is only for emphasizing the form. I don't want to overshadow the entirety of the stuff we done before.
So we're adding it where we want to define the shapes or make sure that one shape doesn't blend into a different shape. So essentially for overlaps and for shadows. Again, big, medium, small, trying to make sure that we don't get too much repetition. trying to see if I can define these two as two separate elements. This is definitely not a perfect design and it's still pretty rushed, but I hope you get the idea. So I'm trying to define big zones of color, small zones of color, trying to make sure that we have a bit more variety in the sizes and in the shapes, and that every shape supports the direction, and again, building hierarchy with color. So you can see that, especially when we zoom out, we get big, clear shapes and get a good understanding of ratio between colors. It's not science or something, it's just 
it's easier to read in the fact it has a clearly defined hierarchy between colors and how they are used rather than the effects doesn't. And yeah, I don't know if you noticed or not, but I also like dividing the water into a rectangular, straight kind of straight lines. So you're dividing it into these kind of tubes or something. And this makes it a bit more repetitive and this also makes it look a bit less like water and way more like ice or something. So yeah, that's most of the feedback. In terms of the motion, it's okay. The timing seems pretty good. Again, can add a bit more variety. Definitely can play a bit more with direction. And the third thing is that everything falls straight down no matter the direction. So the spikes, for example, they're pointing, pointing outwards and they have momentum in this direction but the particles don't go to this direction they fall straight down and this is true for this part as well and this is kind of a bit strange too because it adds way more repetition to the motion and to the animation because again we have repetition in shapes repetition in timing and every scene falls in exactly the same direction in, in exact same way so that's that's it i guess if you have any questions let me know and good luck with the animation